Hi, welcome to the EEV blog, an electronics engineering video blog of interest to anyone involved in electronics design. I'm your host, Dave Jones. Hi, today we're going to talk about dBs, decibels, because I've had a few people comment about what exactly I mean when I talk about dBs in my blog. I might say the minus 3 dB bandwidth of an oscilloscope or something like that, or I might say something 6 dB down, or I might say uh, the uh, roll-off of an amplifier is a minus 20 dB per decade or something like that. But what does that mean? Uh, because beginners seem to get confused with dBs. They seem to think there's some weird, you know, abstract mathematical thing that's all complex, and but no! DBs are really easy. They're one of the easiest concepts in electronics. So what the heck is a DB? Well, a DB is a decibel. What the hell's a decibel? Well, a decibel is one tenth of a bell because deci is a one. It means one tenth, and a bell is a very old uh, unit which you know nobody gives a toss about anymore. But decibels are important because it gives us engineers a way of expressing large values and numbers and working with large values and numbers without making it really cumbersome. The first thing you have to learn about the dB is that it's not really a unit like uh, volts or ohms or amps or something like that. The, a dB is a ratio. It is just a it's, it's a, it's a ratio of two numbers, basically. Uh, so it's like saying something is a half of something else. It's 0.5 times, you know, if I've got one volt and something is 0.5 times that one volt, right? 0.5 is a ratio, just like a dB. And in this case, 0.5 is actually minus 6 dB. Instead of being linear, like saying 0.5, we say minus 6 dB because dBs are a logarithmic ratio. It has to do with logarithms. Now I won't go into logarithms and all the math and all that sort of crap, but uh, there are some advantages, as you'll see, to talking in terms of dBs instead of 0.5 or 1 ten thousandth or 1 million times or 1, one billionth of something. You're better off talking in terms of dB when it comes to engineering. And really, that's all there is to it. dBs are easy. It's just a ratio of one number to another number, usually a reference uh, number, a reference level like one volt or you know one milliwatt or something like that, as we'll go into. But dBs are no more complex than that. It's just another way, a more convenient way sometimes, of expressing a ratio of two numbers. Now there's two different types of uh, formula. One is only for power, when you're talking in terms of watts, okay? Power is the formula, the dB ratio is 10 times log of power 1 divided by power 2. Now this power 2 is actually, can actually be a reference level. In fact, that's basically what it is. You're comparing this number to this reference value and it gives you a ratio, a power ratio in dBs. And the same for magnitude, voltage and current. Uh, the ratio in dBs is equal to 20 times log voltage or current uh, on the second voltage or current. And once again, this is the bottom one is a reference value that you're working from. And that's all there is to it. These two formulas, you can do everything in dBs in engineering, and that's all you need to know. Simple. And of course, there's different types of logarithms. When we're talking about dBs, we're always talking in terms of uh, a base 10 logarithm, not a natural logarithm to base E. Okay, let's go through a simple example that you might get in, typically in electronics. Let's say you've got an amplifier like this, and you feed in a fixed amplitude sine wave. It's con let's just assume it's absolutely constant. Over all frequencies, the amplitude is constant, okay? And you measure the amplitude of the output sine wave on, with either a multimeter or an oscilloscope or anything you like. Now, what you, let's say you measure that at one kilohertz. That's your reference level, for example. And you might measure one volt, okay? So 
remember the V2 over here is your reference level. So that's one volt, okay? Whoop, one volt. And let's say you wind up the frequency on your function generator and it goes to 100 kilohertz or something like that. And you might measure a value now of 0.5 volts, okay? So that's your, that's your other number. So now you've got these two numbers and you want to compare them. Well, obviously, uh, the signal is down by 0.5, okay? It's, you know, it's a half, right? And, and that's a very convenient number to work with, but it doesn't sound very funky, right? In electronics, you've got to have things we talk in terms of dB. And because it's just nicer when things get more complex. So let's convert it to dBs. You've got 0.5 volts on 1 volt, okay? And you do log 20 times log of that. And it's actually equal, you'll find, if you get out your calculator, which you won't have to, which we'll talk about, okay? It's actually minus 6, minus 6 dB. So you can say that that signal is minus 6 dB at that frequency compared to the other frequency. Or in uh, other engineering parlance, you say it's 6 dB down. Okay, let's take a look at an example where dB start becoming useful. Okay, let's say that we've got a system here with three amplifiers in series. Okay, three amplifiers cascaded, and the first one has a gain of times two. Okay, the next one has a gain of, ti gain of times 10, and the next one has a gain of times 31.6. Now, if you want to work out what's the total gain out from input to output, okay, you've got to multiply these together. And, well, that's not too hard, okay, with these numbers, but they could be weird, they could be harder numbers, okay, and you've got to multiply them. You get a total gain of 632. But if you convert these to dBs, you'll find it's actually easier. So if you convert these ratios into dBs, times 2 is actually 6 dB. If you use the formula which we had before, times 10 is actually 20 dB, and times 31.6 happens to be 30 dB. And where we multiplied these before, the good thing, the really neat thing about dBs is that now you just add them Together, 6 plus 20 plus 30 is 56 dB, and that's your total gain. Is And if you actually convert 56 dB back into, using that formula in reverse, back into a ratio, you get 632. And that's the advantage of dBs, is that you can actually, instead of multiplying things, you add them in dBs. And the same as dividing things in, uh, in regular ratios, in dBs, you subtract them. So it's easier to do calculations. And the numbers are smaller and more manageable. Let's take a look at a really good example. We can see the benefit of dBs. And in this case, it's dB scaling. Now, uh, this is a spectrum analyzer. You've, you're probably familiar with the spectrum analyzer. It displays amplitude versus frequency. Now, if you've got, say, a 1 megahertz signal into your spectrum analyzer, you expect to see a line on the display like that, and if it's 1 volt amplitude, you expect to see a volt. Now, what you might want to do is, well, a typical thing with a spectrum analyzer is you want to view where the noise floor is. Now, let's say the noise floor is at uh, 10 microvolts, for example. Uh, now, 10 microvolts, okay, that's one one hundred thousandth of one volt. So if you've got a linear axis on your volts display like this, you have to divide this into a hundred thousand little, you know, things, and then your noise is going to be so far down here, it's, it's one one hundred thousandth. Okay, it's less than the width of the one fiber on the tip of this pen. It's tiny, okay? So you can't possibly see it. You won't be able to display large values, um, sorry, small values of noise in at the, on the same scale as large values. Now, here's where dBs come in. If you convert that into, if you make this into a log scale, okay, in dBs, in dBV, Okay, 1 volt, okay, that's 0 dB is your reference level, and then 
you divide into minus 10 dB, minus 20, and so on, and you get down to, say, minus 100 down here. Now, 100,000, 10 microvolts, which we were looking at before, is actually, if you convert it, it's actually minus 100 dB. So you will actually be able to see it. You'll see your noise down here, and you'll see your signal like that, and bingo! It allows you, dB scaling allows you to view small signals at the same, in, in the same space as large signals. And that's the real benefit of dBs. One of the huge benefits. Okay, let's give you yet another example of a frequency response of an amplifier, which is a very typical application. And uh, let's say you want to plot the frequency response. Okay, you've seen a frequency response of an amplifier. It might look something like that. Okay, now it, you know, it rolls off at some low frequency and it rolls off at some high frequency and its gain is pretty much constant at, you know, one or one volt, say right in the, you know, somewhere in the middle. Now, this can actually span, frequency responses of amplifiers can span very large ranges, or what we call lots of decades. Now, um, it can span anywhere, you know, from basically one hertz up to, say, one megahertz. And that is six decades. Now, if you try and plot six decades, if you have one megahertz up here, if you divide that once again into a million little things, you can't see anything down at this end down here. If your signal starts rolling off at, you know, 10 hertz or something like that, it's going it, to, your actual response is going to look something like this. And you're actually going to see something like that. Now, you can't see any detail down here. So what you do is you compress it using decibels into what are called decades. So that's one hertz, okay, one hertz, and then you go to 10 hertz, and then you go to 100 hertz, and then you go to one kilohertz, and then you go to 10 kilohertz, 100, and so on. These are decades, and if you have this scale, your x-axis in dBs, or what you call, or what they call a log scale, as opposed to a linear scale, then it allows you to once again show uh, detail at the extreme ends of your frequency spectrum. So it allows you to once again view uh, large numbers in the presence of small numbers. And that's the beauty of dBs. Now I actually put up two real um, screenshots here for you of two uh, frequency responses. Now you can see this first one, this is using a linear scale. and well, look at that, right? From 0 to 1 megahertz, it's, you know, what is that, right? It's certainly not linear, like that is not a straight line, and you can't see any detail down at 0 megahertz, right? Or 0 hertz, you can't see any detail at all. But if you take that same, the exact same frequency response, and you plot it on a log axis, or a dB axis, with six decades like this, bingo! That's the exact same data, and you can see that it starts rolling off at about 100 hertz and goes down. And in this case, it's 25 dB down. There we go, we're using the jargon. 25 dB down at around about that 1 hertz figure. And you can see it's about 20 dB down at 1 megahertz. And you'll notice that the slopes of those lines are actually straight. They're linear when you plot them on a logarithmic axis. Go figure. And that allows you to um, say, uh, to, uh, that allows you to easily determine the roll off of an amplifier. In this case, it's going to be about uh, 20 odd dB per decade. And there you go. Okay, let's look at some rules of thumb, some ways you can work with dBs without using your silly calculator, okay? These are numbers, ratios, which you should remember, which will make working with dBs real easy for you. Now, if you're talking in terms of magnitudes, which is uh, probably most, I dare I say, most of the time in electronics when you're dealing with voltages and, and signal levels and things like that, uh, you'll be dealing with magnitudes. So you'll be using the 20 log formula. Remember that. Now what you have to remember, minus 3 dB is 
707, which is 1 on the square root of 2. You may have seen that before. It might be familiar to you. Now, that's what's called the half power point. And we'll actually see that down here. Minus 3 dB for a power is a factor of 0.5. Now, it's called the half power point because um, the, basically, if uh, that voltage into a resistor is going to be um, half the power what it is at if you put 1 volt into a, into the same resistor. So that's why they call it the half power point. And they use that um, for uh, things to determine like the minus 3 dB bandwidth of an oscilloscope or an amplifier. They use uh, it, it's, a, it's kind of an industry convention to use the half power point. But it's actually 0 0.707 times the voltage. Um, now the other one you've got to remember is 6 dB. Now, minus 6 dB is 0.5, so it's half of something, okay? Now, similarly, plus 6 dB equals two times something. So if something's double something else, if you, you know, if two volts is twice as high as one volt, then it's 6 dB, easy. And the same thing with minus 20 dB. It's 0.1, and conversely, so it's one-tenth of something. Conversely, plus 20 dB equals 10 times something, or an order of magnitude bigger. So something, there's another engineering buzzword for you. Order of magnitude is 10 times bigger, or one-tenth. Now, uh, that's real easy to do. Now, okay, why, why do you have to remember these? Because it allows you to do simple, basic calculations. Let's say if something is a thousand times bigger than something else in magnitude, okay? Don't get out your calculator and, and plug in a thousand and do the log and everything. No, you can just add dBs. Remember, plus 20 dB is 10 times. So 20, each decimal point, 40, 60. So a thousand equals 60 dB. Easy. And the same thing with, let's say you had one millivolt, okay? One millivolt is same thing. 20, 40, 60 dB equals minus 60 dB. Piece of cake. Now, if you're talking in terms of power, okay, or intensity, like sound intensity or something like that, then minus 3 dB is half the power. Or the same with plus 3 dB equals double the power, twice the power. And minus 10 is one-tenth the power, and same thing again. Plus 10 dB equals 10 times the power. Simple. Rules of thumb. You don't need your damn calculator. Think you can do dBs in your head and you can impress people. Because a lot of people just don't realise that you can do dBs simply by, you know, how many decimal places and adding them up and remembering a few simple things. Now, I mentioned before that dBs are just a ratio. They don't have any units. And you might see something like this. You might see minus 6 dB. Well, what does that mean on its own? Well, it actually means absolutely nothing. It's a useless bit of information because you can assume it's a magnitude, for example, in which case it's going to be 0.5, but 0.5 of what? I mean, half a rabbit? What? You know, it could be anything. So it's a useless bit of information. So you can actually get a reference which appends to the end of it. In this case, you might see minus 6 dB V. And in this case, V is actually an industry standard um, thing, and it's one volt. So in this case, minus 6 dB equals 0.5, uh, minus 6 dBV is 0.5 volts. And the uh, same thing again. You can, oh, well, so that actually means something on its own. It's actually got inherent value because there's a reference attached to the end of it. And you might also see something like minus 3 dBm. In this case, M is an industry standard reference for 1 milliwatt. So it's minus 3 dB relative to 1 milliwatt, which is going to be 0 0.5 milliwatts, like that. Easy. And there's a whole slew of these industry standard terms out there. There's, you know, there's probably a couple of dozen standard ones, but there's hundreds, or you can even make up your own. I've made up stuff that I'm sure nobody's ever uh, done before. So... Uh, just go check them out. DB references. Now, there's only one tricky thing 
with logs that you have to remember, or you have to be aware of. You've got to be aware of whether you're working with a power or a magnitude. In this case, uh, dBV, as we've mentioned, is a volt, so it's a magnitude. So you know you've got to use the 20 log formula. You, you know you're dealing with that formula. But if you see dBm, as I said, is milliwatts, so it's a power. So you know you're going to be working with the 10 log formula. So, uh, you know, just be careful, because that's really the only major trap with dBs. So start using dBs in your everyday life as well. Take the classic half a glass of water. Is it half full or is it half empty? Are you an optimist or a pessimist? Well, I'm an engineer, so it's 6 dB down. Cheers. And yes, check it out. This is a triple five timer t-shirt. Isn't it cool? It's part of the new EEV blog merchandise. Pick yourself up one.